Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I'm sure many of you are aware that over the past couple of years, there have been tremendous technological advances in post-processing software. These advances are allowing us to take images that we thought were worthless just a few years ago and rescue them and make them usable today. Recently, I've been going through my catalog of images and using Gigapixel AI by Topaz Labs to rescue some of them. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly what I've been doing. For those of you not familiar with Gigapixel AI, it is an application that allows you to blow up or increase the resolution of an image. Most often you're going to want to do this to an image that is heavily cropped. When you crop an image, you're eliminating a number of pixels and you're decreasing that image's resolution. And if it's a heavy crop, you may be limiting yourself to the size of print you'll be able to achieve. For example, if you heavily crop an image and take that file to a lab to get it printed and say you want a really large print, the lab may tell you that your image's resolution is too low and they won't be able to create a quality print from that file. That is where Gigapixel AI comes in. Now I'm going to demonstrate on this image of the bird. To tell you the truth, this image isn't that bad. I'm using it for this example. There is some dead space over on the right I'd like to crop away. but. I'm going to be doing a tighter crop on this image than I probably would do in real life. I just want to demonstrate to you what Gigapixel AI could do. So I'm going to get the crop tool. And as I mentioned, we're going to do a pretty significant crop. Let's just pretend I'm doing like a study of the bird. So I want to eliminate as much of the stuff around the bird as possible. So that's a really nice tight crop. I'll commit to that crop and you can see that the new resolution of the image is 2924 by 1952. That's pretty small. If I brought this to the lab, maybe I could get an 8 by 10 out of it, but anything much bigger than that won't look very good. So this is where Gigapixel AI comes in. Now Gigapixel AI works as a plugin in Lightroom. As you can see, I'm in Lightroom, Photoshop, some other apps as well. I, it also works as a standalone application. Now, of course, I'm going to use it as a plugin in Lightroom. It works the same way no matter how you use it. To get it into um, Gigapixel AI from Lightroom, just right click right on the image, go down to Edit In, and then over, oops, go down to Edit In, and then down to Gigapixel AI. We're going to use a, a copy with Lightroom Adjustments because it is a RAW file. Now, when you use it as a standalone app, it will work on RAW files directly. But when you use it as a plugin, you have to send it over as a different file format. TIFF is the preferred file format. Profoto RGB, 16 bits per component, resolution of 300, no compression. And we'll click Edit. You'll see in the top left hand corner there is a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that TIFF file with those specifications and then it will open it up directly into Gigapixel AI. Now I have my Gigapixel AI set up into what is called the comparison view. This is these four different screens you're seeing. There's five different AI models in Gigapixel AI and having this four panel view lets me look at four of those five at the same time so I could determine which one looks best. Now uh, what I like to do is go to the navigator window and move this rectangle over a part of the image that I think is most important. And then for this image, I think it's the bird's head. Now in the left hand top side, well, first of all, this, as I mentioned, is comparison view. If we go up here and we click on this little drop down, you can see there's a single view mode. This is just the image by itself showing one AI model. And you can see it's showing the standard model. Next is a split view mode. That's where you get this bar. And I could move this bar back and forth. And you could see there's the after. And you could see how it increased the sharpness and clarity on the image compared to the original. Uh, the next view mode below that is a side by side view. The original or before is on the left, and the after is on the right. And again, we're just looking at one AI model right now, the standard AI model. And then we'll go to comparison view. And I mentioned I prefer this. There are five different AI models, standard lines, art and CG, low resolution, and very compressed. So if you're uh, an artist and you did some digital art on a graphics tablet, 
you could enlarge that art using, let's say, the art in CG or maybe the lines. Or maybe you have some type of a scan of an image or an artwork and you need to increase it. You could use one of these specific AI models for that. Now what I do still is I like to look at four of the five at the same time. The top left hand corner is the standard. To the right of that is art and CG. I could click on that and make that active and you could see the settings. Down here there's basically two sliders and I have it set to auto so it's looking at the image to, to, and determining how much suppressed noise slider should be moved and the remove blur slider should be moved. Uh, to the lower left is low resolution. Again, I have that set to auto. Very compressed is the low right. And I don't have that one set to auto, but I'll set it to auto. And you can see, I like to start out with auto so I get um, an apples to apples comparison of these four different AI models at the same time. Now standard, I do have set to auto. Then Typically what I'll do is I'll look and determine which one is the worst. I think very compressed is the worst in auto mode. It just made it a little bit too sharp. It doesn't look realistic. So I'll make that one active and then I'll switch the model to the one model that isn't being displayed and that is lines. So just have that one that is the worst active, in this case very compressed, and click on lines. And it will replace very compressed with lines. So Still, to me, I think the standard looks the best. Now, what I could do is if I want to try to move some of the sliders around, but I want, don't want to lose this auto setting, is I'll keep standard over here on the left. I'll click on this one, Art and CG, and I'll change that to standard as well. So now I have standard on the left and standard on the right, but the one on the right, I'll try moving the sliders around, and I'll see if I could make a better rendering of the image. Um, in this case, I really don't think I am. I think the standard model is fine. Now, how big do you want to make it? You could see up here we have these resize modes. You could go to scale, meaning twice as big, four times as big, six times as big, or you could put in your own value uh, there. Let's just say we'll go with four times, or I think two times as big is good. Uh, you could just put a specific width. You may have a requirement from a publisher or something that wants a specific width or a specific height. You could do that as well. I'm going to stay with the 2x. And you can see in the lower part of the image here, we're going to make this 2923 by 1951 image into a 5846 by 3902. So it's making it considerably larger. Um, over here, additional settings, we could reduce color blight. That is going to most often be for artwork that was scanned. And face refinement. Sometimes you don't want to overly sharpen a person's face, so you, but you want the rest of the image. You want their clothing sharp and their hair sharp. Well, turn on face refinement if you have a person in the image and it won't sharpen their facial features as much as it sharpens the rest of the image. In this case, I'm going to keep both of those off. I'm going with this standard um, AI model and I make sure that's active. It has the blue box around it right here and then just over here in the lower right hand side click apply and then what it will do is it will blow up this image basically make it larger and then it will return us to Lightroom and it has uh, if we go down to the film strip here you could see that there is the original raw file 2924 by 1952 and here's an issue you may encounter I'll click on this and you could see that in the right hand corner there's this little like exclamation point sometimes Lightroom will notice that the metadata has been changed by an external app and what it's asking you to do is do you want that metadata from the external app to be written to the file or do you want Lightroom's metadata so click on that and I want to import the settings from the disk. I want the metadata from the external app to be written to the file. So we'll click there. Technically it's getting written to the Lightroom catalog, not to the file directly. But you see the, the idea here. So now we have this higher resolution image, 5846 by 3902. I could use this to print compared to this one, which was 2924. By 1952 and I think you could see that the enlarged image is just a tad sharper it looks a little more crisp 
So that's what I've been doing recently, going through those older images that I thought, especially my wildlife images, that I just thought I didn't have a long enough lens. I didn't get enough reach. It just, you know, there's too much space around the animal. Well, I've been uh, cropping those now uh, relatively heavily and using Gigapixel AI to make them printable and usable. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>